Okay, in this video, I'd like to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 31, and I'm going to discuss Green's theorem, otherwise known as the Divergence Theorem. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstories.com. So the previous videos which are relevant are as follows. Number 29, where I discussed the fundament fundamental theorem of calculus, and number 30, where I discussed the fundamental theorem of gradients. Um, it might also be it might also be useful if you look at video number twelve for a discuss the divergence. In actual fact, I'd recommend you do that too. So, before I continue, just to point something out here, I'm actually not going to prove the Gre prove Green's theorem or the divergence theorem. If you're looking to get a proof, and I thought about proving it until I saw the video on the Khan Academy. So. The Khan Academy has a much better video than I could ever do on this particular topic, and I found it on YouTube. It's got an excellent video, two parts, approximately 20-25 minutes worth in total to watch. So it's excellent. So if you're looking for a proof, that's a great, that's a great, great place to start. What I'm trying to do in this video is use the uh, use the Green's theorem or, or the divergence theorem. Now it's named after it's named after the mathematician Green. Okay, so that's why it's called Green's theorem. But its, it's geometrical meaning gives us the name also the divergence theorem. So just to recap, the fundamental theorem of calculus says as follows. If you're looking at a function f, we want, we're looking at trying to integrate the function df dx with respect to x. All we need to do is look at the value of the function f, or small f, we'll say, at the boundaries a and b, and take their difference. If we extend this to three dimensions, then, and we're looking at a path integral. So along our path, this time we just extend it, so we take the gradient of f, I'm sure you can understand that, and we integrate a dl instead of dx, because that's three dimensions, and we just sim once again we take the value of the, of, the, of the function at the end points. So to state it, the divergence theorem, or Green's theorem, is a triple integral, so it's over the volume. I don't like writing three integrals like that, it's a bit of a pain, a pain in the face, I find. So I like the notation where it would say the v at the bottom indicates that, or implies that it's a triple integral, and an, a, a, an s would indicate that, indicate that it's a double integral. So what we're doing here is um, we're going to take the divergence of our function f. Let's say it's a vector. We're going to take the divergence of it and integrate it over a volume, d tau. And that's going to be equal to the closed integral over a surface of your function f dot da. Okay, so that's what it is, right? So comparing it to the fundamental theorem of calculus and the fundamental theorem of gradients, you might say it does actually make sense because this time we are integrating a derivative and we 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 just evaluated the boundaries. Here we integrated a derivative and we evaluated at the boundaries. So here we're also integrating a derivative, namely this time the divergence of our function f. We're integrating it over a region. Uh, the x was it was only it will say it was a region but in one dimension. Here, a region in, in our line in three dimensions. Now we're looking at a region in three dimensions. Okay, so a volume. And it's equal the the integral is equal to the function at the boundary. And in this case, it's the it's the surface that bounds the volume. Okay, it's the surface that bounds the volume. And look, you can look about this geometrically as well. Um, you know, you might have, let, let's say, I, I can't even draw volumes, let's say this is my volume, and if you can imagine, it's, 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 a, it's a volume in three dimensions, so you might have the surface that bounds, binds it down here. But, to be honest, I don't really want to begin looking at the, the, the geometry of this, because I don't think it's very important or necessary for our, our purposes. So, okay, we, uh, hopefully we can accept its kind of, its analogy or its kind of link towards the other two theorems that we've done so far. But the, the reason it's called the divergence theorem is as follows. We know from video number 12 where I discussed the divergence that we'll say f dot da gives us the flux of something through a surface. So it's a closed integral, so it's going to give us the flux through the whole surface. But what gives us flux? Flux comes from, it comes from sources. Okay, so if you want to work out the total number of flux, we can, how do we calculate it? Well, we can add up the total number of sources. Or what we can do, we can, that's one way of doing it. Or we can see the flux, we can see the flux through a point on the surface and add up all along the surface, all, 
along the surface. Okay, there are two different ways of calculating the divergence. And what you'll see here is this integral calculates the number of sources, and this integral here looks at the flux. So just to say it once more, right? So if the vector f, okay, if that represents the flow of a fluid, then the flux of f is on the right-hand side. Okay, that's what we have here. It measures the total amount of fluid passing through the surface per unit time. Okay, so we're, we're happy enough with this. But if we look at this one here, what we have is the, we have an integral which essentially counts through the whole volume the number of sources in total. So essentially what we have, this integral can be written as the integral, the number of sources in volume, the number of sources in the volume is equal to flux through surface. Okay? And that's why it's called the divergence theorem, okay? So it, it because we're using the divergence, of course, here. Uh, and why, well, I suppose, why would you use the divergence? Well, the divergence, in general, measures the spreading out of your function, okay? We know that it's either diverging or converging from where you're measuring. So, um, so for example, a place with high divergence is a source. I've discussed that in the past. Sources have positive divergence and sinks have negative divergence. So what we're really doing here is adding up the number of sources in our, in our volume. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com.